In this video, we consider OLS estimation of the autoregressive model of order 1. First, we consider OLS estimation of a linear regression model with time series data. We have a model where yt is equal to xt prime beta plus epsilon t for t equal to 1 to time capital T. Next, we consider sufficient conditions for the OLS estimator of beta to be consistent. And recall that we need three properties. First, we need predeterminedness, meaning that the conditional expectation of epsilon t given xt is equal to zero. Next, we need that the mean of xt, xt prime is non-singular, which is equivalent to assuming that xt has no perfect multicollinearity. Lastly, we assume that yt and xt are stationary and weakly dependent. We recall that under these three conditions, the OLS estimator for beta is consistent. Next, we turn to the autoregressive model of order 1. Recall that yt is equal to phi times yt minus 1 plus epsilon t for t equal to 1 up to capital T. We assume that epsilon t is independent over time and identically distributed with a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma squared. Moreover, we condition on y0, meaning that yt can be considered as fixed or known. Compared to the linear regression model, we simply have that the, our regressor xt is yt minus 1 and that beta is equal to phi. Moreover, we have that our OLS estimator for phi is equal to the average of yt minus 1 times yt divided by the average of yt minus 1 squared. Note here that due to the fact that epsilon t is assumed to be normally distributed, the OLS estimator coincides with the maximum likelihood estimator for phi. Next, what we want to do is to show that the autoregressive model satisfies the three conditions for establishing consistency of our OLS estimator. We will throughout assume that the true value of phi is numerically less than 1, such that our data generating process is stationary. We start out by verifying that the conditional expectation of epsilon t given yt minus 1 is, is equal to 0, such that condition 1 is satisfied. Note that yt minus 1 is simply given by phi times yt minus 2 plus epsilon t minus 1. Then Due to the recursive structure of this model, we have that yt minus 1 is simply phi to the power of t minus 1 times y0 plus the sum from i equal to 1 to t minus 1 of phi to the power of t minus 1 minus i times epsilon i. This is just a function of epsilon 1 up to epsilon 
t minus 1 and y0. This variable is by construction independent of epsilon t as we have assumed that the epsilons are independent over time. Hence, the conditional expectation of epsilon t given y t minus 1 must be equal to the unconditional expectation of epsilon t as epsilon t is independent of y t minus 1. We know that epsilon t has mean 0, so indeed y t minus 1 is predetermined. Next we turn to condition 2, stating that the regressor should not be perfectly multicollinear. So we just need to show that y t minus 1 squared is non-singular. And that is indeed the case if the expectation of y t minus 1 squared is positive and finite. But recall here that the mean of y t minus 1 squared is sigma squared divided by 1 minus phi squared if phi has absolute value less than 1. This we have assumed. Lastly, Note that by assumption, we have that phi is numerically less than 1, such that the process yt is stationary and weakly dependent. So by assumption, condition 3 is satisfied. So we conclude that whenever phi has absolute value less than 1, the OLS estimator for phi is consistent. Thank you for watching.